And now... The Hall of Fantasy. Welcome to the Hall of Fantasy. Welcome to the series of radio dramas dedicated to the supernatural, the unusual, and the unknown. Come with me, my friends. We shall descend to the world of the unknown and forbidden, down to the depths where the veil of time is lifted, and the supernatural reigns as king. Come with me and listen to the tale of The Automaton. Over here is what I call its brain. Put the power on, Elizabeth. Yes, Father. I've only begun on the binary system, but watch. Why, it's moving. It's sitting up. Yes. It's getting down off the table. And now you'll see a sight that no one else has ever seen before. It's walking around the laboratory. Yes, you're witnessing the first movements of a new creation, superior to man in that it will never tire, a servant to man, for that will be its place in the future. A machine that looks like a man and will be able to think like one. Fantasy will present the automaton in just a moment. The automaton. I first met Dr. Eric Ziegler at the conference on scientific research. I knew of him, of course. His name was famous throughout the world as one of the foremost experts on automatic control. It was the closing session of the conference when he made his now famous speech. And in conclusion, gentlemen, may I say that mankind can expect his technological advance to continue. He can look forward to the future in the secure knowledge that his life will become easier and longer through the advances we make. That he will be free to direct his energies towards the conquering of new frontiers, bringing him closer to the day when he will stand alone over all the universe. Bravo! Bravo! His speech so aroused me that I couldn't help making my way to the speaker's platform, pushing my way through the crowd which surrounded him in order to congratulate him. Congratulations, Dr. Ziegler. Dr. Ziegler? Dr. Yes, Ziegler? yes. My name is Drake Sheridan. I just wanted to tell you I thought your speech was the best thing I've ever heard. I take that as a compliment coming from you, Dr. Sheridan. I know about your work. Oh, nothing at all compared to yours, sir. And Dr. Sheridan, I'd like to talk to you further. Now, why don't you come to my house this evening? What time? After dinner, about 8.30. Here's my card. Well, thank you, sir. Uh, you'll be there? Of course. I'll see you then. <laughs> Yes? I uh, came to see Dr. Ziegler. Oh, your name? Drake Sheridan. Oh, yes. He's been expecting you. Won't you come in? Thank you. Just follow me. Was the most interesting effect of all. A new paragraph. Uh, the success of the automaton of which I am speaking is uh, dependent upon the excellence of the brain I can give him. Uh, my work has become so... Dr. Sheridan is here, Father. Oh, oh, excuse me. I do hope you'll forgive me, Dr. Sheridan. Of course, I sir. I was dictating my report on a project on which I am now working. Please be seated. And before I forget, this is my daughter, Elizabeth. How do you do? My pleasure. Thank you. Uh, drink, perhaps, Dr. Sheridan? Yes, I uh, I could stand one. Yes. Any particular preference? No, no. no. Uh, would you do the honors, Elizabeth? Of course, Father. Uh, <clears throat> Dr. Sheridan, perhaps you're wondering why I asked you to come here. I uh, have been, but I consider it a privilege and an honor to be here. <laughs> Thank you for the compliment, but it wasn't necessary. You may be interested to know that I've followed your career quite closely. And from what I've gathered, you're a very intelligent young man. Well, thank you, Dr. Ziegler. I'm not complimenting you to make you feel comfortable, Dr. Sheridan. I mean what I say. Exactly 
Why did you ask me here, Dr. Ziegler? Uh, to talk to you. To see uh, what kind of a person you are. And here are your drinks. Oh, thank you. Thank you, my dear. That's just right, Elizabeth. Yes. Uh, Dr. Sheridan, I'm going to be completely frank with you. I am working on a private project financed with my own money, completely divorced from my work at the Research Institute. Mm -hmm. My daughter has been helping me with this work, but unfortunately she does not have the knowledge nor the training to be of anything more than elementary assistance. I see. I am interested in finding an assistant who will devote his full time with me to the work I am doing. You mean... You intend to leave the Institute? Yes, yes. My work is finished there, and besides, I want to devote more time to this particular project of which I'm speaking. What's the nature of your work? Automatic control, of course. Uh, would you be interested in working with me? Well, it's a great honor, sir. I will make it worth your while. Well, I'd like to know exactly what you're working on before I make any decision. I believe I can trust you. I I have a building some miles outside of the city which serves as my own personal research laboratory. Uh, we might as well drive out there. That is, if you're interested. Why, well, certainly am. Uh, good, good. Uh, Elizabeth, get the car from the garage, please. We'll drive out tonight. Well, you certainly have it well equipped, Dr. Ziegler. I wanted to show you that you would be working with only the finest of equipment. Who's there? Uh, what's that? Oh, that's the watchman. It's nothing to worry about, Bart. Oh, it's you, Dr. Ziegler. I didn't hear you come in. It's all right. We'll check out with you when we leave. All right, sir. Uh, will you open the door, Elizabeth? Of course. All right, let's go in. I'll put on the lights. Now you'll see what I've been working on for the past year. That sheet-draped figure on the table over there, what is it? My newest research project in automatic control. But what you'll see, you'll see. It looks like a human body underneath that sheet. Not quite. Here, I'll pull back the sheet. No, it isn't a human body. That's correct. What do you think of it, Sheridan? What do you think of my automaton? Is it finished? Not yet, but soon, with your help. A mechanical man, a robot shaped exactly like a human being. What better form could I give him? After all, our own bodies evolved to what we are today. Why should I attempt to improve on nature? What do you intend doing with, with him when you finish? Tell him, Elizabeth. Well, this automaton will be able to do... All of the hard and painstaking work of mankind with, without ever getting tired. It can fight his wars. It, it can be the first to explore outer space. It can free mankind to direct his energies to, to other channels. I don't know. Oh, come, come, Sheridan. You look at the automaton as if you thought he was some Frankenstein monster. Believe me, this is the farthest thing from that imaginary creature. This is a work of science. This is not a monster created from the dark recesses of someone's imagination. This is our key to the future. We'll return to the Hall of Fantasy and the tale of the automaton in just a moment. Back now to the Hall of Fantasy and the tale of the automaton. <laughs> Dr. Eric Ziegler, his daughter, and I stood looking down at the metallic figure lying on the table before us. In all respects, it resembled a man, a metal and plastic man, created by the genius of Ziegler. This is our key to the future. This automaton will free man from labor. Let him develop his mind to the fullest. How much longer do you think you'll have to work before it's finished? I can't tell. That's why I need you to help me set up the automatic self-regulation of its brain. Then you haven't developed the system of feedback yet? No. As you are aware, that is the basic machine of all self-regulating systems of automatic control. A man's mind is a complex creation. The mind of the automaton must also be complex in order that it can do the work of a man, in order that it can think and regulate itself. Why don't you show him what you've accomplished so far in the feedback system? All right. Now, over here is what I call its brain. Uh, put the power on, Elizabeth. Yes, Father. 
I've only begun on the binary system, but watch. It's moving. It's sitting up. Yes. It's getting down off the table. And now you see a sight that no one else has ever seen before. It's walking around the laboratory. Yes. You are witnessing the first movements of a new creation, superior to man, and that it will never tire. Servant of man. For that will be its place in the future. A machine that looks like a man and will be able to think like one. I shall return him to the table now. It's climbed back up on the table. And it's lying down again. All right. Turn off the power, Elizabeth. Well, Sheridan, what do you think now? I'm afraid I don't know what to think. Will you work with me? I... Oh, yes. Who wouldn't jump at the chance? Of course I will. Good, good. You understand, of course, that the feedback system and the binary scale are still in their elementary stages. When the brain, the... The automatic control is finished. It will fit inside the automaton's body and head. That's correct. There will be controls on the robot's chest to set the automatic control to working and another to stop the machine if it needs to be repaired. Of course, our largest task will be to develop a complete automatic self-regulatory system to fit inside the robot's body. As soon as you can be free... Which should be in about two weeks. Good. Good. Then we shall begin work on the final stages that will lead to the completion of the automaton. Rather than completely sever my relations with the organization for which I worked, I took an extended leave of absence. There were living quarters in the laboratory in the country. Ziegler shut down his house in the city, and he and his daughter and I moved our belongings to the laboratory in order to devote every possible minute to our work. Not only was Ziegler intent on having the automaton think for itself, but he was also insistent that the robot be able to talk. To those ends, we went to work. If we were right in our calculations, the amplifier and receiver we have built into the mechanism will convert our words into electrical impulses, which in turn will activate a response from the automaton. Those responses themselves will be electrical impulses, which will be converted into words. Well, why don't we try it and see, Eric? We might as well, I suppose. After all, the automatic control is almost finished. We only have the more complex reactions to set in the binary scale. All right. Turn the control on his chest. Right. It's on. We'll see what happens. I order you to sit up. Uh, jump down to the floor. I want you to answer me with your voice. Uh, what have you been created for? To kill. That's not the right reaction. What was that? Correction. To work. That's right. We must have made a mistake somewhere along the line in the reactions we set up. That to kill value is present for only one situation, for personal protection. I thought you'd come up and... What are you doing? Well, we're just conducting a test. Oh, man. That's correct. Oh, man. Stay back. Stay away from me. Elizabeth, be quiet. He wasn't going to hurt you. I, I, I'm sorry started toward me, frightened me. You see, he stopped now. There's nothing to fear. Nothing to fear. Get back. Back to the table. Lie down again. Turn off the control, Drake. Right. What's the matter, Elizabeth? You're shaking. <laughs> It's just that that thing frightened me so. It, those lenses that it has for eyes, there's, there's something hypnotic about them. He looks so much like a man. I, I know he's made of plastic and metal, but, but 
Well, I fear him. Elizabeth, there's no sense getting emotional about this. There's nothing to be afraid of. I know you're right, Father, but... But what? But what would happen if you ever lost control of the automaton? That will never happen. But is it possible? Hmm? Perhaps. <laughs> We didn't do any more work on the automaton that day. We went into the city in the early evening to see a play, leaving the watchman at the laboratory to take care of things. We got back about 12 and were having a late snack. More coffee, Drake? Oh, yes. <clears throat> Please. I think it did us good to get away from here this evening. We've all been working too hard. Uh, do you feel better now, Elizabeth? Oh, yes, Father, much better. Yeah. Tomorrow we can finish up with the automaton. Then we can show him, after suitable tests, of course, to the world. Uh, if we're successful, you ought to win a prize. What was that? Oh, someone screamed. It came from upstairs. We'd better take a look. <coughs> Who could it have been? The only other person up there is Bert the Watchman. <laughs> there it is again. Hurry. Look. Huh? The door to the laboratory is... It's open. He must be in there. The lights are on. We'll see what's wrong in a second. All right. Oh, oh, no. It's Bert. What's the matter with him? His neck's been broken. Oh. He's dead. But how? I don't know, only... What's the matter? Look, we turned off the control on the robot... When we left, didn't we? Of course we did. Why? Because... Because now it's on, Eric. The control is on. You are listening to the tale of The Automaton on this week's journey down the corridors of the Hall of Fantasy. We'll return to our story in just a moment. And now, back to our story. An original tale of fantasy entitled The Automaton. <laughs> On the floor of the laboratory sprawled the broken body of Bert, the night watchman. A scant few feet away, I stood looking down at the inert form of the automaton. Before we had left the laboratory, we had turned off the control, and now we found it on. But that is impossible. Take a look for yourself. The control is on. But we turned it off before we left. Are you sure? Of course, I turned it off myself. How did it get on? Perhaps Bert turned it on. Why should he do that? Well, perhaps he was curious. But the most important thing to find out is what killed him. The robot. Don't be a fool, Elizabeth. The robot won't kill unless attacked. That's right, Elizabeth. It's the only reason for it to kill. Actually... The reaction was set in the control system for self-preservation. For no other reason than that. It's the only time the automaton is dangerous. Maybe you made a mistake when you set the automatic controls. It's possible that we might have made an error in the feedback system, Eric. And that the automatic selector chose the wrong value. When Bert turned the switch on, the robot thought he was in danger and killed him. We didn't make an error in the feedback system, Drake. We checked each value through five times before we placed it in the server mechanism. You know that as well as I do. Then... Then how did Bert die? I don't know. Master of men. It's still on. Turn it off. Did... Did you hear what it said, Eric? Master of men. We didn't set that reaction in the servo mechanism. Something's wrong. Do you mean the automaton can can think for itself? What about it, Eric? We'll dismantle it tomorrow morning and check it over thoroughly, just to be sure. What about Bert? We'll merely explain to the authorities that he died in an accident here at the laboratory. We can do that in the morning, too. Now we all need a good night's sleep. Don't you think we ought to move him out of here? Well, they may want to look at his body, Elizabeth. Besides, nothing more can happen to him. Uh, 
Elizabeth? Who is it? It's Drake. What are you doing up here on the second floor outside the laboratory? I... I couldn't sleep. Oh. Well, neither could I. Drake, do you think that... that the robot can operate by itself? Why do you ask that? I was thinking... What if... What if Bert was merely making his rounds? What if he walked into the laboratory... And the robot was there, waiting for him. Well, that's... that's not possible, of course. I wouldn't say that. Isn't... isn't it possible that you and Dad might have made a mistake in setting up the feedback system? Isn't it possible that... that there could be an error in the automatic control system that would allow it to operate without being switched on? Operate enough to at least turn the operating switch on? Well, it's, uh, it's possible that there's something comparable to a short in the control system, which would mean that the robot could operate without the control being on. Yes. I want to go in there and take a look at it. Why don't you wait until morning? No, I, I want to see it tonight. All right. Let's go. Are you... Sure you want to go inside? Yes. Switch on the lights. Mm -hmm. well, everything seems to be all right. Let's take a look at the automaton. Every time I see it, it... It frightens me. There's nothing to be afraid of, Elizabeth. I'm not so sure... Control button is still off. Wasn't he lying the opposite way? With his head at the other end of the table when we left? No, I don't think. Where's that hum coming from? I don't know. It sounds like the robot's power system. Yet the control button is off. Are you sure? Well, let me get a little closer to it. Well? The hum is coming from the automaton. That means I was right. I guess you... Drake! Huh? Look out! Master of men! The system is on! It, it's sitting up! To kill! To kill! We made a mistake. We must have made a mistake. It's getting down! Let's get out of here! Is it, is it following us? No, it's just standing there. But it will be after us in a few seconds. Hurry, hurry. Let's get this door closed and locked. There. Oh, I can see it through the glass panel. It's starting towards the door. I heard some noise up here. What's the matter? The automaton's in operation without the control being on. What? That's right. We must have made a mistake, Eric. The, 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 the only thought that thing knows is to kill. We have to destroy it. It's getting closer to the door. That door won't hold. Let's get out of here. It has to be destroyed. But how? It weighs over half a ton. I think I have it. Stop here by this window. Oh, another crash against that door and it'll be out of the lab. What are you going to do? Its reactions are slower than ours. We'll wait here for it. It'll come walking towards us. At the last minute, we'll run to the side. I don't think it'll be able to stop itself in time. It should crash through the window and to the ground below. A two-story drop should destroy it. The door is down. I hope your plan works. And if it doesn't? Then we'll have to think of something else. Here he comes. It's coming up and down the hallway for us. Over here! Over here! It sees you. Here it comes. Do kill. Do Sir. When do we move away? Not yet. Master of men, kill all men. It's only a few feet from us. How soon? In a moment. To kill. Now.
Uh, are you sure it's destroyed? Yes. The fall completely destroyed the automatic control. You're looking at nothing but a pile of metal. What do you intend doing? Starting all over again. Somewhere along the line, we made a mistake. We have to find that mistake and correct it. We don't want a master of men, but a servant of men. Someday, I don't know when, but someday, we'll be successful. And then one of mankind's most useful servants will be the automaton. So runs tonight's tale of the unusual, the terrifying, the unknown. Join us again when next we journey down the corridors of the Hall of Fantasy to hear another strange tale of the supernatural. All characters and events portrayed in these programs are fictional, and any similarity to actual events or persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. <laughs>